As you saw from the start there, we went exploring for a little bit. Also got two cats. But anyway, so what we got was a heart of the sea, and we also got some melons, jungle saplings, and some bamboo. And now we're here at a mangrove swamp to gather a bit of mud, as I'd like to use this for the pathways around our base. At the moment, I don't have any, so let's do a bit of mining here to get a load. That should be enough mud for now, and if we need more, we can come back. I've also collected a few propagules so that when we um, want to use mangrove, we've got a couple of them to make some trees. We are now back at the base, so we can take a load of this mud and just put it in this chest here. And also offload a load of other blocks I gathered on the way, like a load of mossy cobblestone from a tiger farm. And finally, let's come behind our house, where I've also set up a little sheep pen for wool. And then we can plant a few saplings, and this will be our tree farming area. So let's plant those jungle ones, and also a couple of these propagules. And these will give us some nice big mangrove trees. I now want to get started on the project for today, which, as you can tell from the title, is a creeper farm. But to make it, we'll need a little bit of space. So let's clear this area out here. Got a little bit of space now. Let's start marking it out. So I want to have the center of the farm here. It's going to be the three by three center. I'll have trapdoors all around. And then the walls will go like this. Let's start marking it out. This should be the shape of a farm, so let's go and get some more dirt so we can fill in the floor. As we've still got a couple of spots I need filling. And let's get started filling in all these gaps. This jungle tree has also grown, so I want to go and harvest this quickly. And that is all cut down, and hopefully we get a jungle sapling back as it'd be quite a travel to get back to the jungle. I've now extended the ground down below, so I've got a nice platform to build this on. And I'm probably going to only do about three layers. And these centre blocks are where the creepers are going to be falling. Let's quickly dig down a couple of blocks here. About to here should do. And then we can dig along there. That's where we're going to send the creepers off to and where there's going to be a killing chamber. So now we need to dig this 3x3 three three out. And now we just need to put two buckets of water down there. And here is the second one in there. And now we've got a little area where the creepers will push down and then they'll go along here. And now we just need to dig down little bit here where the water stops and here we're going to put some campfires which I'll die on. But for now we can leave that bit and get up to the surface continue on the outside of the build. To start with I'm going to replace these blocks down here with some jungle blocks. Now that we've got this layer of stripped logs, we can start building up. And for this, I'm going to do a bit of a randomization pattern using packed mud, mud bricks, and some more of these stripped logs, along with some planks. So I think that would make a nice contrast or pattern. And that, as you can see, those blocks work pretty well together. And every now and again, very rarely, I'm going to add in a couple of these mud brick stairs to add a bit more depth to this build. For the 
first layer is now done, so we just need to cover it up. And this will also be the floor for this second layer. So let's get all this dirt placed other than in the central nine blocks that Coopers can fall down. We now have this floor on top, but we've now got dark patches down here. So let's go in on every side and just place a torch in here. That'll be temporary, we'll move them later, but now it means we don't get any creepers spawning in here. It's time to move on to the next floor. With this last divider in here, the second layer is now done. I thought I'd take the chance to drop down here and have a quick look at the build. And I think it's looking alright at the moment. Of course we will add some more details on at the end. But at the moment it's looking quite nice with this different pattern. But I am running out of materials so we'll need to go and gather some more jungle logs. We now need to make the next layer of um, spawning platforms, but unfortunately we've run out of dirt, so it's time to break out the shovel and go dirt mining for a little bit. It shouldn't take too long. And we should now have enough dirt. So let's get placing it all back down. <laughs> And that is all of Dirt Place down, so it's time for the final layer of blocks. I have unfortunately almost run out of material. I think it's back to the mangrove swamp gather some more mud and also some more jungle logs from the jungle which is right next to it. But before we go this time I'm going to clear my inventory a bit. On the way there are also these big spruce trees so I think I'm going to mine a couple of these down to add a bit of decoration to the outside of the farm. And here is the tree all mined up. And now let's continue on with a reasonable amount of logs. And on the way, I've also found one of these azalea trees, so let's try mining down quickly on the centre of two blocks, of course, and see if we can get a little bit of moss. And here's the entrance cave, so let's place down some water, and straight away there's a creeper. So let's get rid of that guy. And also a zombie. That frightened me. Got a shovel kill there. So let's get rid of all the mobs quickly then we can get a few bits of moss this will come in very useful for some terraforming later on and while we're here we might as well gather a few glowberries as they are also very nice and now it's time to head out we're about halfway to the mangrove swamp and I thought I'd stop quickly to craft a hoe and then gather up these hay bales as then we can create a load of packed mud with it. So at the moment I'm completely out of wheat. We're now at the jungle and it's time to get chopping again. And that's quite a bit of the jungle wood. Enough stacks for now I think and also a reasonable amount of saplings. Now it's time to head over the top of this hill over here to the mangrove swamp where we can get to digging some of this mud. I'm now back home and I've dropped everything off so now I want to 
breed these two cats. We need to let one stand, I think. Or let both of them stand. And then hopefully they should breed. Let's try feeding them again. And hopefully they give us baby cat. There we go. Now let's make them sit again. And baby cat too. Now we can give him some and then make them both stand. And then those should breed too. Hopefully. And now it's time to do the final few layers on this farm. Now that that layer is done, it is time to add in the dirt dividers in between. And now it's time to work on the roof. So I think I want to do a pretty standard roof. So we'll need a few more bricks. There we go, a couple more of those. And then I think I'm just going to build it up a bit here. And then eventually we'll have a nice shape to the roof. I've now got this nice roof shape in, but I want to come in on the sides and put in all the trap doors now. Well, not all of them, this will need quite a few to go on the inside, but just the ones around the edge here, which we can put in pretty easily. And we've just got to do this on all three layers. And finally, we need some blocks in the middle that the creepers will pathfind to. And after surrounding them with trapdoors, it's now ready. But we do have to add trapdoors on the roof of each of these rooms. But for now, I'm going to continue with the roof here. So at the moment, it's all just open to the sky. So let's get to adding some roof on here. I've now added the final roof on here. And now I'd like to start on what's going to be the actual roof. So we can start by putting just a couple of dirt blocks and it's not going to stay as dirt so don't worry about that. I'm going to change it up. But for now it will be dirt and will magically transform it into a better looking block. I've now added in a roof so it's time to change it out from dirt. But of course it won't be staying as dirt. Let's put in a moss block there. Now we need to head down and get some bone meal. And it seems like some pillagers have come to meet us. So what I think I'm going to do is just trap the leader one in a boat. There we go. And now we can get rid of the other ones. It shouldn't be too hard. And now that we have this single pillager, let's just um, make a little area for the boat to go in, which will protect us too. And then we can pacify this guy. I think the pillager has now been pacified, so the boat still renders in, but it's not shooting any arrows anymore. I think it's been pacified now. And now we can just come up here and bone mill a load of this moss. And we just keep going until all of the roof has been done. Now that we've mossified the roof, it's time to put on some walls here and add a bit more decoration by coming on the tops and adding a few fence gates. And now all the fence gates and walls are in, so let's drop down here and let's take a look at it. And that is what it looks like for now. So I think I am going to come onto the roof and I'm going to add a bit of mossy cobblestone. And after adding a few patches of mossy cobblestone, the roof is looking nice and detailed. So inside the creep farm is not ready yet, as we still need to add in a load of trapdoors. And after getting the trapdoors from the iron farm, it's time to place them all down inside here. 
We now need to add in the killing bit, which we can do with a couple of campfires on top of hoppers. And then we just lay out a carpet pattern like this so that only creepers can spawn we don't get any spiders in our farm. It's now time to get the cats in, so let's unzip one of them and try and get in. I've got one of the cats up here. Now what I'm going to do, just carefully nudge the little cat over and then drop it down that hole. And then what we can do is we can drop down, but we should have gone to the previous layer. Make sure it's fully nudged on there. I think that cat's fully on. And then we go up to the next layer here. And what we can do is we just fill in the floor quickly. So we put the trapdoor back, that back, and carpet. Then we can get another one from the same hob. Here is the second one almost in. And now let's just nudge the third one in the place. And then that's it for this side. Now we need to move on to the other side do that I'm just going to flip all these trap doors up like this then we can do the same on these sides here is a trident guy I've found let's see if we can get a trident maybe we might be able to get one and I don't think the trident got them fortunately maybe next time we see one after adding a little AFK spot in the air the creep farm is now finished and working Let's go and look at what we've got as I AFK'd for about two days. And we got almost 18 stacks, that's very nice. For a relatively small and cheap farm. But now I want to complete this bit more, adding some spruce in. So I think we're we'll probably adding a few spruce windows and maybe also try out adding some spruce logs in here which will also strip of course let's have a look at what this looks like quickly does that look right and yes i think that looks all right so now we'll just go along stripping these i now want to come in and add a small window right here on every side we will have it so let's just start with this side let's just remove a little area here we've got a clogged inventory too some good so let's throw some stuff out and now that that's not clogged i think i'm going to fill this area in with some mud now this will be a nice contrast block and now let's just decorate this bit around this kind of window there's no actual glass here it's like that shape of a window as we can't have an actual window because of the light level inside but at least we can make a nice window shape thing and after adding some stairs in the corner here it should be done so let's have a quick look at that and see if it looks all right I think that does look okay so now let's do this on all four sides and there is the second one done I'm now going to head back to never quickly as I want to get a couple of quartz bits and better bar shield on there oh zombie pigment straight away and it seems there are already these guys for some reason. Okay, let's try and knock them off. There we go. And also, I probably should have my sword out. Now, let's see where we can get quartz easily. I think we... Oh, there's lava straight down there. We don't want to get knocked off there. Where can we get down to get quartz? Easy. Oh, drop down there. Okay. Got to be careful now. Make sure that none of the hoglins catch up to us. So that would be bad. I think we're relatively safe in here, hopefully. So let's just get some blocks. That will do. And I don't think there are any hoglins up here only maybe one and we can just 
run over here and gather some quartz peacefully now. Now that we're out of the Crimson Forest. I've now gathered enough quartz, so it's time to head back to the portal. And I think it'd be easiest to just get there through the treetops. As then we don't have to worry about the piglins and stuff like that. And we're back at the portal, so let's go through. And it seems this guy's crossbow is disappeared, which is cool. And now we can make this micro wheat farm. And there's a little bit of salt tilled soil in there where we plant wheat. So we do need to fill up all the dispensers, so that won't help. But we could fill them all up. I went to our skeleton spawner to get all of the bones. And to start it, all we have to do is double click that lever and start clicking. And as you can see, we're getting plenty of wheat. So you can press F3 and T, and now we'll auto click for us, hopefully. And there we go, automatic wheat farm. After running it for about a minute, we've now used up quite a bit of bone meal. We've got plenty of wheat and also a load of seeds. So I want to use them to plant a wheat field around this. So at the moment, it's just a box in the middle of a field. So let's first add in some mud around here. So it's at least a bit decorated in itself. And then what we can do is start hoeing the ground and plant the field. It is now day 200 and I think it is finally done. So to start with, I've taken this pathway we've got here and I've extended it a little bit. So let's first go along this route. Along here we've got a few torches. This goes around the building, all the way to this trapdoor leading to our shulk, not shulk farm, to our gunpowder farm. Where we can get all of our nice gunpowder. Then we can just come back up. And this jungle trap door blends in very well with the path, so we could just continue it right over here. And then, if we go back down this path here, then we can take this turn. This leads us to the wheat farm deco. And yes, this is a bit over the top, I know. We could have just um, had the wheat farm on ground or something. But I decided to do an entire wheat field for it. So now we've got this little dirt mound in the centre, which we can just turn on like that and then use. So we'll use that probably in the future. And then we've just got dirt path going through the wheat field. And around the edges, I decided to go for mossy cobblestone and cobblestone border, which make, separates it nicely from this grass here. And now the world's really starting to feel a bit more connected with all these different fields. We've got a perch tree field here and flower field there. And then this here. And I think next I'm going to work somewhere in that area. And now I think it's time for a nice shaders replay mod walkthrough. <laughs> 